Hello everyone and welcome back to Local Liberty. This is Brian and Shane. We are here on New Year's Eve. We want to discuss a, uh, a topic that I've been thinking about for a while, uh, engaging a lot of different uh, discussions of economics, politics, um, and also the season is ripe for this. Uh, this is We're going to talk about Santa Claus. Um, my kids are, uh, are at the age where um, Santa Claus is is a big part of Christmas tradition and um, I, I don't really encourage uh, Santa Claus and everything to do with it and I don't really try to try to tear it down either. I, I, don't, have, the, I, don't, have kids. I don't have kids yeah. but if I did have kids I would never Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, it's all fake. Yeah, or tell them that immediately. Sometimes I feel that way. To um, me to me it's like but at the same it introduce kids to reality to right. the, the world as it exists. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that sentiment, um, but at the same time, it's it's an aspect of our culture. It's it's so you don't it's think it's fun. harmful. It's fun for our family. Because some um, people argue that it's harmful because you're you're not engaging, you're not teaching children from a young age about how the world actually is. You're not instilling those values mm -hmm. about thinking yeah, about in, things. In are. some ways, I do, and and, and 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 I'm conflicted on it a little bit. That's why I was saying that I don't really encourage it. I just kind of, you know. I'm married. I have to get along with my wife. Um, I want my I want my kids to partake in the uh, fun and interesting and colorful colorful parts of our culture. I the, the conversation I've had with my wife many times is I don't really feel like uh, you have to. I think you can do the whole Christmas thing without lying to your kids. I think right. That's that's, what, that's actually um, that's what people say. Say so you can still have Santa Claus. Right. You can still have the Easter Bunny. Right. Just, just like you can still watch Star Wars with your kids and say right. this is a great. Work of fiction. Right. Um, so that's so that's sort of a, that's sort of a setup for Santa Claus. Now, why the heck am I going to want to talk about Santa Claus? Um, I think uh, so. Let me so sort of we'll completely switch gears here for a second. Oh man. Um, the and I want to talk about Austrian economics, which of course is directly related to Santa Claus, right? Ah! Um, we having a free market economics is another term, a little more accessible maybe than Austrian economics. Um, the the school of thought. That, that's referred to as Austrian economics uh, is based on um, deduction, a logical deduction from an axiom, meaning a uh, truths and, and knowledge that is not based on empiricism, or another way of saying that, it's not based on direct experience. So um, it's, it's, ba it's based on the, the axiom that really is fundamental to it all is that humans act. And then from, the, and humans engage in purposeful action. And from that, you can deduce all sorts of economic law. Um, and when I engage in conversations with people, I, I, you, the common critique you hear is, it's unscientific dogma. It's, it's not based on empiricism, therefore it's not valid. And I, I think about that in context to Santa Claus. And then I think about, how did, uh, how did myself, when I was a kid growing up, and, and I assume this, this is probably a common experience for lots of others, you know, I was raised, okay, you know, I was raised in the regular Santa Claus is real and, and the Easter Bunny and all that stuff, but over time, you, you begin to question it. And the questioning can come, the things that can make you question it, I think you can categorize in two different ways. There's the, uh, this is, um, I, a priori and or a posteriori, I shouldn't even try to until I can pronounce the freaking words. Basically, the knowledge is, or the experience, or the thought processes that you go through when you start to question Santa Claus, some of it does, can come from direct experience. Like maybe say, uh, let's say you found a bunch of presents in your parents' closet. And then later on, you see those presents two weeks later with... A tag that comes from Santa Claus. That's experience that makes you question: Is Santa Claus really real? Or, um, or maybe you see your parents. You get up at you know midnight on Christmas Eve and you see your parents stuffing everything into the um, into the stocking. These are all direct experiences that can make you question things. But I think this is the whole point of this episode. I'm trying to get at. I think a lot of kids start to question Santa Claus not based on experience, but based on reason and logic, and they deduce things from 
from experience, but I see knowledge as this tree that experience can lead you to this point, reason can extend it to this point, and then experience can get you to that point, and it's this big spider web. And knowledge that comes from reason is perfectly valid, just like Austrian economics is knowledge that comes from logic and reason, not from experience. Let me, let me stop you here, Brian, because you wrote the cop-out unscientific when discussing the deductive nature of Austrian economics. Economics is the scientific study of the economy, uh, of, um, of resources, of scarce resources. By nature, science is an inductive method. So, if you're using a deductive method as in Austrian economics, that would be more akin to a philosophy than a branch of science. Just by the nature of how we define science. Science is, a, you know, science is not a deductive process. But... This, so, so, but my, but, point, but, my but, point, though, but you're, is, this is, is, is not necessarily a criticism. That's, but that is, that if someone's saying it's unscientific, well, it is, in, in a sense. Uh, like, philosophy, something I'm really interested in, right? We, 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 you start with an axiom, you start with a, a, a starting position. And you have to logically make, make conclusions based on that starting position. Uh, but it, basically, is, is philosophy not a science? It's not a science. Why not? I mean, it, this is just, may just be terminology, basically. Right, uh, is it, okay, forget that. Is philosophy it can be informed valid? By, it can be informed by science. But is it valid knowledge? That's the point. You can use whatever word you want to say, but is the knowledge you gain from philosophy valid or invalid? They, Plato and Aristotle were discussing this 2,000 years ago. So, and, and the knowledge, it, it, everything in a sense, you know, we, 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 is uh, inductive in that we have to rely on some prior experiences to form any idea about concepts. The only, for me, the reason why science works and why we accept it and why we, we go with it is because pragmatically it works, it just works. So if this method, like, if this method has, has given us X result this many times, we'll keep doing it. Even though technically, just because uh, we've seen this happen 500 out of 500,000 out of 500,000 times, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen that 501st thousand times. That's how science works. Right. Uh, so th I'm glad you brought that up because this is, the part, this, is the, this is the heart of the argument. Now, to s there's different branches of science, and I'm going to use science to include things like philosophy and mathematics, um, because there's natural hard sciences like this is made of wood, and wood has certain properties, and maybe I'll knock the whole set down. Um, so there's physics, chemistry. Uh, but, uh, astronomy and these sciences are are inductive, as you say, and the traditional um, the, the traditional scientific method it works very well and it makes right. sense to gain new insight and new knowledge yes. in these disciplines. That's science. However, Just using the scientific method, that's science. However, um, human beings are a special case of knowledge because we're basically studying ourselves. Mm -hmm. So. We are not a piece of wood and we are a piece of steel and we can't perform certain experiments to understand steel in the same way that we can use reason to understand ourselves. So um, looking at economics as is a, it's not necessarily a study of resources, it's a study of people and how people use resources, how people interact with resources. So in that sense, um, the scientific method is very appropriate for, um, for analyzing certain physical phenomena, or, or a million different kinds of physical what phenomena. What I'm saying, and this, again, this might just be semantics and definitional issue, is economics is the study of... You can, you can, you, they, there's all kinds of definitions. Usually it's the, the study of scarce resources by alternative means, the study of you know, people interact and, and, and use resources and exchange resources, whatever. But it, it's, it's a science. And science implies using certain methodology to come to come to your conclusions. If if you if you if you just make up a starting point, here's a starting point, and, and then you derive conclusions logically from there, you're not using the scientific method. You're doing something else. That might be valid. They do that philosophy all the time. I'm really interested in formal logic. We always do this. So that, that's so different. That's, that's a yes, different that's, thing. It is different. That's the, that's exactly the point, and it's. It, but, if but, you, but if someone claims that Austrian economics is, uh, and I don't know much about Austrian economics, let's just make that clear. But if someone claims it's unscientific, the way you're describing Austrian economics to me, that's not unscientific. Okay. Well, unscientific, I guess. Doesn't necessarily have to be a pejorative. We may have different, um, I guess, different uses of the term science. I guess maybe, maybe the word I should use is, is knowledge. It sounds to me and, like a philosophy. 
it, a philosophical system, the way you describe it. Well, I guess, how would you describe geometry? That's the most common example. When people have a problem with this, is calling it invalid or unscientific. Mm -hmm. And again, if, un if science is the wrong word... And thought, math and um, science are different things. The math is an internally coherent system where you can derive results 100% accurate 100% of the time. Because it's internally, it's, 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 it's like, it's a branch of logic. And logic, you start, here's your starting point, and you move from there. Math is, is the same thing. It's used in science, but it's not the same and, thing as science. Okay. And then the, again, that doesn't mean it's invalid. I'm right. just, but but okay. this particular criticism, like, it might not even be, a, it, it, you might be taking offense to it, but you might not even should be taking offense to it. You'd be like, oh, it's not scientific, so. What does that mean? Is that, so it's bad? It's not scientific. So that, that's what, so I, I'm, you're, you're equating that scientific with a uh, um, negative, a pejorative sense. Someone's like, ah, oh, yeah, doesn't, that, that's worthless because it's not scientific. Pretty much, yes. That's because it's so okay. So then, let, let me reformulate the uh, let me reformulate the criticism. Um, because this knowledge is un and I guess that is that is actually what I meant. That's what I wrote. Because the knowledge is unscientific, in meaning it did not follow the scientific method in general. Therefore, it is not valid, and it can just be discarded at a whim. And that's the common criticism. And and the, the people like uh, Mises that, that carried this school of thought forward stated that the scientific method is just an inadequate and not proper way to study human action, to study human behavior. And studying human behavior is what, the, um, is what economics really is. That's, we, got, we got a lot of definitional issues going on here. There, we have tons of... Psychology, the study of human behavior, the study, the study of the mind, uh, behavioral economics now, sociology. We have science, of course, can study human behavior. But basically, the, 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 for, the method that human behavior is studied in that manner is formulate a theory and then go and collect a whole bunch of field data and test your theory. There's and, one way, yeah, sure. And, no, that's, but that... But what would be the, what would be the scientific method way? That would be the way, right? I have a hypothesis that X that I have my hypothesis about human economic behavior is X, Y, and Z, and then I'm going to go take a sample set of twelve thousand, and then from there I'm going to draw certain conclusions. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be a sample set. It could be a, a in a lab experiment with a you know volunteer. Whatever, a controlled whatever. experiment. Right. Yeah. Of course. That's that's the bad. That's the most a reliable way to get results. That that uh, can be independently verified. It's the, it's the method that we as humanity have come to. The scientific method, thousands of years in the making, has proven to be the most reliable method of human knowledge. That's why we use it. Not the only method to obtain human knowledge. It's just very reliable. So, the the, the but so, so me, with me, Mises criticism here, I think, I think stems stems from uh, maybe the times he was talking about it because uh, at. at like, Mises died, what, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? When did he die? Mises in the 70s. I 70s, say. okay. So, but no, this, like, for, this formulation of his, this came at the turn of the century. Oh, okay. Um, so, the turn of the century, you had people like Sigmund Freud spouting all kinds of nonsense and unscientific garbage, right? It, it's part of psychology. I mean, Freud is a joke now. I just took a psychology class. We almost don't talk about Freud because none of his things are scientific, and he was the dominant name. So, during his lifetime, he probably saw these, these, these people, these quacks, which mm -hmm. is basically what they are, and go, they know what they're doing, but they, they aren't really using the scientific method. Now we're much better at that. Psychology is much, much improved as, yeah, as a discipline. He, his focus was in economics. Right. And economics... But you said, study, the, you said studying human behavior? Economic behavior. As in, why do humans act? Right. And... And we can study that, scientifically. You can observe it scientifically, sure. But to think about and predict why someone acts, it basically to formulate laws as simple as human beings respond to incentives. That's economic law. That is something that is derived, is deduced from human action. That humans act. Therefore, humans respond to incentives. Uh, see, this is the economic knowledge that I'm talking about. You're, 
Uh, yes, we came to that conclusion without, without science. But you know how we also came to that conclusion? With science. So we've also done thousands and thousands of studies uh, uh, regarding incentives and how they affect people's behavior. So we already the knew. Studies, we, no, we already knew no, incentives studies work. Can, studies can verify. Right. And, and the scientific method can verify, but the scientific method does not produce, is not the starting point. The theory, you don't just pick a theory out of air and say, you know what, I'm But you said go. we already knew. No, 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 we deduced it from an axiom. The axiom is humans act purposefully. Right, but it wasn't based on any experimentation or observation or... That's not, it's an, that's, that's the definition of an axiom, right? Right. So, so my point is, you say you already knew, but scientifically we did not, we didn't, but we did. We're not going to get that right now. But then after the fact, we confirmed it, which, which everyone already knew anyway, because it was so intuitive and obvious, people respond to incentives. But there's lots of unintuitive, or I should say less intuitive things that you can derive logically about economic behavior from simple axioms. Possibly. Uh, and the point is... But we don't know. We can't point point that, that verify it. until we actually have evidence of it. You can think about something and no, think things no, don't exist. But this is, and this is, uh, goes back to the simple example, is go back to geometry and the Pythagorean theorem. Once you, if, you know, and I don't really remember the proof because this was 20 years ago, but um, once you, you are exposed to the proof and you get the proof, you say, okay, yep, the Pythagorean theorem is valid. You don't go out and measure triangles. That's the point. You don't because that's an internal internal system what I just discussed. Yes, and, 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 and human behavior is also internal. No, human behavior is an external phenomenon that we can see in the real world that's not just the no, concepts. No, no, no. What the decisions we make in our mind is internal. It's an observable, it's an observable phenomenon. We can, we, can do, we can do brain scans. We can see the regions of the brain that are active. Whereas mathematics is a concept. It doesn't exist. No, we do not have a brain scan yet that can, that can pick up a scan that says... Um, I, I woke up this morning and I had a choice of doing 12 different things and the thing that I chose to do was option number 5 and therefore option number 5 is logically my most, um, my, my, my highest priority item on my No, but, uh, but, but based on the current research, it seems almost certainly that will happen. We'll, we will get that level of detail of functioning because it's based on the real world and what actually happens because mental processes are a process of, of the brain, of, uh, of biology. So we, that eventually we could break that down so by observing things. Exactly. We, already, we already can protect people's behavior. We already can attach lectures to people. And by, by, by the researchers who can look at their brain scans and predict what they're going to do with the next 20 seconds. If, 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 the, if accepting the Pythagorean theorem is internal, then accepting the, the logical implications of human action cannot be any different. It's, no, because it's, you're, you're talking about a, a theory in mathematics, a concept humans made up. It doesn't exist what? in the real world. Mathematics. So that, that doesn't exist in the universe. We exist. Mathematics is a concept. Like, if I, if I told you the concept of, a, of a, a blue glowing blob right here, it doesn't actually exist anywhere. It's a concept. Like the concept of animals. It's a concept. Concepts are different than things that actually exist. We exist. Human beings are real. Mm -hmm. So it's a different thing you're talking about here. You're talking about slightly different things. So, with the, the path, Pythagorean theorem, right, we know because we, we, we knew the starting points, okay, the starting points of mathematics, just like logic, you have a starting point, you move logically, and you can reach a conclusion, deductive reasoning is accurate 100% of the time, if, well, if you have a, a, a valid premise, um, and you go, you go through the, the, the proper syllogism, blah, 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 it's 100% accurate. And why doesn't this apply to economics? Oh, it could apply to economics. But, but I'm saying, but you're talking about two different things. I'm saying it does. The, the Austrian school of thought is applying, is using deduct, or inductive, no, sorry, deductive logic deductive. to economics. That's what it is. Right. The, 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 again, I don't know much about Austrian economics. And the, but axiom, the axiom starting point is that humans act purposefully. Right, and that starting point is... And it's what knowledge can you derive from that starting point. Right, but that starting point alone is, is, is just there. Right, it's an axiom, you said. Just, just, do people act uh, purposely? I, I guess, well, I mean, what do you we mean? We assume? Do, do you, but do we assume it or do we know it? Like, do you... I, 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 I know nothing with 100% with certainty because I don't think I think 100% certainty exists. So let's just get that out of the way, philosophically. With 100% certainty, if you don't eat any food, you are going to be hungry by tomorrow. Maybe. 
I could be living in the Matrix. But weren't we talking about the real world? I could be delusional right now. I don't know. How do I know? There's, there's the way, the no way to know. I, I that, think certainly, but that doesn't matter. Uh, that, that only matters like philosophically. In the real world, we can, we can know things with a very high degree of certainty. I know, I know my name is Shane. With a very high degree of certainty. Does not matter? If that's actually a hundred percent in the absolute sense. No, who cares? Because it works pragmatically. It works practically in my everyday life. So it's the same way for these other things. You know, we have a high degree of certainty. But I wouldn't say. But the, when you have the deductive reasoning, when you start with the starting point, our shadow is like, well, this is it. It's 100%, which turns people off because that's not how the real world exists. The real world usually is. Is it closer to the Federal Reserve's team of economic experts that take their econometric data and then crunch out and say, hey, blah, 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 hey, you know what? We think the entire 7 billion people in the world should now have their interest rate raised by 0.25%. Does that sound better? No, but that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, it does. We're talking about economic theories and, and which ones produce better results. Well, Kansas, it's, see, now, now you're, you're, you're putting a value judgment. And science generally doesn't place a value judgment on things. That's, that's something else. That's philo philosophy places value judgments. And so we learn that's what human beings do is we place value judgments on everything every day. Right. But that's not, that's not what science would do. Science would be is results oriented. So you do X, what will happen? It, that X, Y happens. Is Y good? Is Y bad? I don't know. But it happens. You can make a judgment about that. About it, you know. That's, so I, I'm, little, I'm a little confused about uh, oh, exactly what your your problem is here. Okay. So let me, okay. All right. So let me bring it back to Santa Claus. Okay. Because I, basically, I'm using Santa Claus as another example similar to geometry, where knowledge that is gained. Um, through means besides the scientific method can still be valid knowledge. So people, uh, so kids that say they go on an airplane ride and they, um, and they, they start to get a sense of how big the world is. They, as they're taking off, they can see there's a, you know, there's more houses than they could ever possibly count. Tiny little dots that they're, that they're seeing as they're flying over. They, the whole concept of Santa Claus visiting every house every night, it, in one night, sounds more ridiculous to them. Or, um, or they, they get a sense of physical space and they, you know, they go to uh, the kids' fair and they see Santa Claus as some guy that weighs 400 pounds with a big beard on. There's no way he's fitting down anybody's chimney. The, and they, Very few people use the scientific method in their everyday lives. I, almost no one does. Correct. However, so of course, there's other ways to, to, to like gain knowledge. But if you can say that science is just the way say, to verify, but if you can say that economic way. knowledge gained through a deductive axiomatic reasoning is not valid, then why is it valid to? Oh, I'd say it's not, I'd say it's not valid. I'd say uh, you did. Oh. I'm saying I'm speaking to people that do. Um, it's the reliability. It, it, is the is the heart of the problem here. Science has been shown to be boost the most reliable okay, results Okay, so okay, so you want to talk about reliability? Scientific science starts with a theory, right? And then the theory is well, it might start with theory. Sometimes it starts with observations. No, but the People. scientific method starts with a theory, and um, or a hypothesis, and the hypothesis and the scientific method could be as ridiculous as. I threw spaghetti against the wall and it formed in this pattern. Therefore, I am going to, my science experiment is going to be set up X, Y, Z, and I'm going to validate my hypothesis. Or your starting point for your hypothesis could be reason and logic. That's the difference between Austrian economics and whatever, classical economics or neoclassical or mainstream economics. The starting point is theories that some guy just says, hey, you know what, I got a theory that if we made the minimum wage to 100 bucks an hour, X is going to happen. Where in a, as an, as a, in an Austrian economist would say, you know what, don't bother with your, with your experiment. If you, raise the theory, if you raise the minimum wage to $100 an hour, it's going to have these results. You know, the economy is going to be disrupted in these ways. And that's the problem um, with Austrian economics then. 
because you can't assume what will happen in the real world. No, it's not because it's, it's, it's not based on assumptions. It's based on it's based on assumptions. You no, said no, that. no, it's based on economic law. We agreed that people respond to incentives. We right. don't. We do not. Right, but you we said do don't bo don't bother testing this because we already know. That's not a, you always test even if even no, no, if it no. seems no no. If you you're saying we, you, you are you saying we can't. We can't tell the legislator, say, look, Mr. Legislator, don't bother experimenting with this. Just don't vote for this law. Are you saying that's invalid? Are you saying we should we should instead no, let's actually raise the minimum wage to hundred dollars and let's see what happens. But let's we're gonna do it scientifically. We're gonna experiment. Rather than somebody say, you know what? It's a terrible freaking idea. If it doesn't matter what you raise the minimum wage to, it's just bad. Just get rid of it. Here, uh uh. I agree because why bother doing something that seems so likely to cause harm? But you, 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 the idea of being certain this is going to do that—that's the problem. I, I can be relatively certain that this bad thing is going to happen if, if I if I go here in this neighborhood. So I'm just not going to go there. But that's not a scientific way of, of thinking about the world. Maybe maybe nothing will happen to me. But you know what? I'm just not going to do it. It doesn't seem. I don't have any any good reason to do it. Let's just not bother with it. All right? That's what you're saying. But then to equate that as to be at the same certainty level as, you know, well done, vigorous scientific experimentations is, is a different matter. I'm not trying to equate it to well done scientific certification. The, my, the, the whole point of Austrian economics is to say that the economic laws stand in front of a priori to the economics, the, the scientific certification. Yeah, that's it, ridiculous. I thought, we, I, thought we, I thought we agreed on some economic law. Uh, no, we, we, well, I didn't agree on it. That's philosophy. You, you go, you, you just you make up a starting point, and then you and you go from there, right? That's not that's not learning about the real world as it actually exists, and that doesn't actually mean it's like in a sense. It doesn't necessarily mean we should go try all these horrible experiment experiments. It doesn't mean like we should be the Nazis and go, oh well, this will do this to this person, this to this person. Because we're gonna use we're gonna use science to see if it has bad effects. We can go, wait, no, we don't need science. This is just, we're not going to do this because it's going to hurt people, right? But, but we still have to go, wait a second, we don't know for sure. Maybe there's some weird thing going on with human genetics. This, this would have worked. Maybe there's some weird stuff going on here. Sometimes things can be counterintuitive. So that's, that's the distinction. It's an academic distinction. People in their everyday world are not going to be making this distinction in their lives. No, see, I think this does affect everyday people in, in the real world because our society is built our society now is basically a, a technocracy, a rule by experts, and we have the scientific experts who are going to guide our, our, uh, our benign legislature and our, our benevolent rulers because the science, the science will guide us. The scientific experts know what's best. When instead, no, we're definitely not that at all. That's the. What do you wrong. mean we're not? We're, we're not. We're no ruled one, by no one, no one, no one uses science in the in the real world. We were ruled by politicians who say things that that feel what good. What do you we're, think? We're ruled by people's everyday everyday values. Those those scientific experts, they might be experts. They might be able to say, look, we can deserve this, this, and that. But then they, then they make value judgments. What do you they think? Their own philosophy the professors in. making a quarter million a year at UConn in the political science and economic departments are. Do you think? That they are, um, do you think that they're, you know, espousing libertarian ideals? No, those are the experts that's of the state. But that's irrelevant if they're aspiring libertarian no. ideals or not, because that's a philosophy. That's the intelligentsia. That, that's the philosophy. That's irrelevant. It's libertarianism is not science. We, 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 have a, we, we, we make predetermined value judgments about what's good in, in the world, and then, we, then we, and then we try to get to that world. Other people can go, that world I don't want. That world is not good. I made this is my starting point, and I'm going to go from this, right? Those are that's not science. That's different. So those people that you're talking about, the intelligentsia, the, the academics, right, this always gets always gets so confused. Right? They're, they're they're experts in their field because they know things that that because they've studied so extensively. Now, just because they're experts in their field, like say they're climate scientists, that doesn't mean they're experts in politics or 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 the economy or other 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 issues. So it doesn't necessarily mean you should listen to like, oh, we need to make this X, Y, or Z environmental law because the climate scientist said so. The climate scientist is just is just is just saying, oh look, this is bad. If we reduce this, it will be better. And then uh, and then he does make some the law that he thinks will do that, but he has no idea, right? So there's his political leanings, there's his philosophical leanings, and then there's this, the the thing he actually really knows, the, the data. 
But making value judgments about that about that data is is going to be different for, be based on different people's own values. Why? Because humans act purposefully based on their own value scales. We're saying the same thing here, and you're just not accepting the implications of what you're saying. Where Whereas the, the foundations of Austrian economics is accepting the implications of basically what you just said, that people are going to interpret the data, whatever the hell the data may be, they're going to interpret based on their own value scales. Right. And then the whole, a whole line of economic reasoning can be derived from that. That's all it is. That's all it's saying. And you can use that economic reasoning, or you can call it economic law, right. you can use that to guide sure. policy, or sure. you can say, well, you know what? Let's just, uh, the, the, you know, University of Connecticut research just came out with this study that said, you know, really the, the, the impact of minimum wage isn't going to be, uh, isn't going to be that bad. So I think let's go to 10, 10 an hour. You made, you just made two things again. You're conflating two things. They come up the study. There's actually been a number of studies that show in certain areas minimum wage has not called this, the dis disastrous effects that people said it would. That it just doesn't do that. That's, that, is, that is data that we've confirmed. It exists in the real world. You might not like it, but oh well, that's, that's what it is. It's the data. Mm -hmm. Now, where you go from there, does, now does that mean that's an argument for the minimum wage? No. There's no argument. There's no value judgment there. This is just the, how the world works, and we're observing it and <coughs> categorizing it. Now, from there, we have, to, we have to make decisions based on our own personal morality, based on our, our, our own idea of what's right in the world with that data. That's it. So, so you're not making that distinction here that so I'm making. That study that says that, okay, the minimum wage was raised over here and... It, it might have been in it, Seattle or something. Okay. And the minimum wage was raised in Seattle to $15 an hour, and Seattle hasn't fallen into the ocean right. yet. Um, but the, that's the, true. The, but the diet... Uh, the, the diet the, I don't know if we're talking uh, about the same one, but okay, the diet predictors that right. Pacific Eagle said didn't happen. Okay. The dire predictions is not what... Austrian economists make. They don't make dire predictions about anything. Let me stop you for a second. What they say if, if, if is, they, they, let me finish this okay. point. What they say is the minimum wage in Seattle raising it to $15 is causing whatever negative effects that are worse than if you didn't raise the minimum wage at all. So it's basically, it means if you, the, um, Let's just to keep it simple. You say you raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, then employment is going to go down. They'll say employment is going to go down further than it would have, or it changed less negatively than it would have if you didn't raise the minimum wage at all. So to conclude that since the dire consequences didn't happen, that therefore minimum wage does not lead to or cause certain consequences. That's just an invalid conclusion. The the way it's the the whole premise of of looking at things logically is basically to say. You know, all other things being equal. If you do X, X is going to have this effect. All other things being equal, if you raise taxes in... Ah, uh, bingo. In the state of you just nailed it. You're in an internal system because not all things are equal. Because this is the real world. We're in a complex system. Not in the Austrian economic system where, 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 we, where we can control all factors like, like we can do in logic and mathematics. So all other things being equal, who gives a fuck? I don't no, care. It's because I want to know what the real world, how things work in no, the real world. No, it's because if you use the all things being equal, you can understand the effects things have. But not in the real world, because the real world, no. all things aren't equal. Okay, in the in, in, <laughs> let's take Connecticut for an example. Um, we just we're raising our minimum wage tomorrow yep. to nine sixty five an hour. The Austrian economist says that minimum wage is going to decrease. Or, or, or to put it precisely, there is going to be less jobs are going to be created in Connecticut than there otherwise would have been if they did not raise the minimum wage. That's that's the claim. That's it. If that is it, that's fine. But I often see, like in the case of this, that which I have to study at hand, um, where there's a specific uh, people on the other side. Maybe they weren't all student comics. Said these specific things will happen. Will, uh, employment will drop by this percent. Uh, prices will be raised this percentage, blah, 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 blah. Let's study this. That didn't happen. They were wrong. So, in this case, with Ashton Economics, kind of say, they say that there's going to be a downturn. How do we know if they're right or wrong afterward, after the fact? That prediction was right or wrong. The, the whole point is, the predictions... Well, basically, they say a prediction. The prediction says X. You can say that particular prediction was wrong. Right. The law economic law behind that prediction stands 
apart from the results because the results because I'm sorry because the the, the 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 economic laws don't make predictions in the in the numerical or the empirical sense they make predictions that say they're I don't, I'm not using all the right words I guess they're maybe they're not quantitative they're qualitative or basically if you say the, the economic law says if you raise minimum wage it will have the incentive to reduce employment it's not going to say if you raise minimum wage by 5%, it'll reduce employment by 4%. That's not what it is. So here's the problem with that. It's not so much that's a, that it's bad. It's that we need predictive power. Like, if, you can, if, if, if it's so vague to not be able to have predictive power, then it's like, all right, sure. Because, like you said, all other things but, being equal, but you, the real world is not. You just said in the real world you can't control lab experiments for everything. And this no, is what I've been but we can still make predi we can still make predictions based on the real world. That's how science works. That's how inductive reasoning works, right? And we can see that this trend happens. Now, for more closed systems like physics, we can predict with a remarkable accuracy. For more open systems like the study of sociology, we can predict be behavior of groups, but we can't predict behavior of individuals. So we can say, as a group, humanity just responds this way 80% of the time to this. But you can't say any individual will respond that way. But we can still we still have the power of predictive capacity. We can see that 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 this as a group holds over and over again. And if 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 you're saying something vague like uh, this won't work uh, if we implement this policy or it's going to hurt hurt the economic system, a lot of people are like, well, I need more than that because because there's so many other confounding factors going on of what it's actually going to do. I I get that feeling of people needing more from the sense of. People need to be led by experts. People want that. So no, we are... I, 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 I want that because that, that's the best knowledge. I want, I want the most accurate knowledge. I want, I want the most reliable chance to be able to know what's yes, going to happen. Yes, and the whole question is what methods produce the most accurate results? Scientific for... method. No mainstream economist predicted the crash of 2008. No mainstream economist predicted a whole shitload of other crashes before then because... Their theories are like the Keynesian models are based on demand, increased demand, increased demand, increased demand. And if you keep increasing demand, then everything's going to be better. Gee, what do you know? It blows up. I'm not lot. defending. So uh, I have a problem with economics as a whole because there seems to be so much of it is, is drawn up into people's personal value judgments about the world. Of course it is. Yes, but it's different for different for different branches of science. You don't see this in physics. You do see it political science. It's not science. the same thing as physics. No, but it is the same thing. It shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be treated the, the same way. No, but it should be treated the same way. Just, it's just using that, that the method to produce predictable results. There's so much other stuff going on. The, the, you can't produce predictable results in human action because yes, human you beings... Psychology does so. We, we know things, again... When I say ec economic action in the series of how humans act, how they make decisions, how they employ resources, how they prioritize things. Because yeah, and we're, and we're because, working on that now. That, that's our a new field. Experiment, because the laboratory, the moment you had the laboratory built. It's not just a lab. Yeah, but the, the conceptual laboratory yeah. to, hypo to test your hypothesis, the moment that laboratory was built, and that laboratory would have to be set up to test people's value scales, the second you got it done, it would be invalid because people's value scales change constantly. So there's no way to there's no way to conduct controlled experiments in the sense of people's value. Their values, their value scales are, are, is irrelevant for the experimentation to happen. The experiment is only ha is only observing what is, is happening. What what decisions does, per does person X make when Y happens? I don't know what their value system is, but what we're just going to see is over 100,000 people presented with this situation, this happens 80% of the time. This is how psychology, sociology, and these other softer sciences move forward. They can't rely on that predictive accuracy of physics or, so, or some of the harder sciences, but they still can have the same very reliable results. But again, it's just there's, there's, so there's, that, there's more of a wiggle room. That to me is, is kind of like, are, are, that's, that's how a lot of medical science I'm learning moves forward, is through just simple observation. Yeah. We're going to look at 100,000 brain scans. Yes. And from those brain scans, we're going to make some... Uh, some conclusions, and that's okay because that's all we've got. That's all um, because we, you know, not to get a religious angle of this, we didn't create our own bodies, so we can't 
study them in the same sense that we could study a Lego model that we just put together. I don't think that's true. I think you can but, study by the same way. We just don't have the technology well, to do okay, so. Okay, our brain. We haven't figured out how to study our brain in that way yet, to that knowledge. It's true we can't study the physical aspects of our body. But now but we can do something better for economic action because economic study is about studying how people interact and how they behave. And basically means is we're studying our own ourselves. So we can start with some... Some some axioms that give us basically give us a head start, it, as opposed to just starting from pure observation. It, it, to me, it seems like a great thing to be able to start from some real logical foundation rather it's, than just from. It, it's a great a thing. Pure it's a great thing because in the real world, humans use heuristics to solve problems. They use algorithms. They don't have time to go through a complex series of steps to to go. How do I get out my door during the day? You drive the car to this. No. They use rules of thumb. They don't have time for this, this complex thinking about the world. Most people don't use a scientific method. They don't do this, of course. Obviously, it's good to have starting points. Obviously, good to have shortcuts. Of course, I don't use a scientific method every day. I, what? No. But, but, science is about having the most, the find the most, be most certain about something. That's what it is. That doesn't mean other ways haven't reached correct results. That's just a science has shown itself to be the way to, uh, to most often get the correct result. The gold standard. But in everyday life, of course, well, you're not going to do that. You have to stick the fields of science and be ridiculous. It just won't work. Now, is that how humans think? Well, you know, we, we've talked a whole bunch, uh, many different episodes about there's no, there's, no, there's no freedom of any kind without economic freedom. And the, basically, what first attracted me to, and you're going to love this definition... Um, what first attracted me to Austrian economics was I came across the, the definition that it's the science of liberty. In the sense, now we've, we've already had it out over the word science, um, but what it is, is it's a rigorous, well-founded system of logic and ideas that says individuals should be free. And free individuals will produce the best results. That's what Austrian economics is. And that, that doesn't sound like a science to me, but... And that's oh. why, again, we're, that's, that's semantics, I think. And that's why most Austrian economists happen to also be libertarian. Not every single one of them, but the, the strong majority of them. So um, that's what attracted me to Austrian economics, was it provided a, a foundation to basically say, you know, why everybody else should just leave me the hell alone and let me live my life, and I'll let you do the same. And, oh, there's, there's actually some very profound thinking that goes behind this, rather than just the emotional, it makes me happier that I'm free. There's, there's history, there's, there's deductive logic, and then there's there are a whole lot of books and a whole lot of scholars that say, that individual freedom is is the way to go. So that's that's why I'm talking about this in relation to Santa Claus, and that's why I'm here having a fun argument with Shane about it for forty something minutes. Um, so uh, it seems to me like you, you you just you summed it up right there. This appealed to my personal philosophy about the world. This appealed to my personal morality and how I think people should interact with each other. So I went with it. That's fine. <laughs> that's what I do for, for, for all kinds of things. But that's different than science. Okay. We'll leave it there. We'll maybe we'll have a further discussion on what the heck the science, epic argument what the continue. word science really means. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, this has been Brian and Shane of Local Liberty. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And give us a like and our a thumbs up or whatever the Whatever they say, they just wants. press that thing. <laughs> all right, take care, guys.